Well hello there and welcome to my little arty corner of the internet. My name's Angela and I'm still trying to figure this YouTube thing out um, but I'm, all, I'm also very grateful for everybody who's subscribed to the channel who's left me lovely comments and asked questions that are always welcome and who have left likes for the videos. It means an awful lot. Um, it's just so lovely that people are taking an interest, even if it's only a passing interest and you drift through and decide it's not for you, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so it's Sunday morning here. It's the 5th of December. The sun is just, well, has got up above the hills and it's just moving around. Where I live, I live in a town and it's basically surrounded by hills from val valleys on it all sides. Sort of like there's a, you know, you know, sort of like two valleys meet here and, and, and sort of, you know, it's lovely. So, sun, you know, sort of like sunrise is later than advertised because of the darned hills and sunset is earlier. So, but I love it because it's fab. Oh, one of the things I love is if we get a lightning storm and you can see the lightning playing off the hills all around and it's absolutely fabulous to watch. But yeah, I know. Anyway, don't get that too often though, sadly. Um, you know, it's called living in the UK. To art. I hope you're all well before I get to art. Be doing all right as well. So here we are. Um, this is one of my sketchbook pages. I just wanted to show you that I'm filling in the gaps because um, I wanted to try some different things out and to see what happens. Like with everything, these are all explorations and experiments and having a sketchbook something that you can just try things out in without any pressure but if it goes wrong it goes wrong but hopefully you learn something from it as well and you think ah that didn't work because and this one here is just way too busy I really you know sort of like where I've put the cross hatches in perhaps I could do with black but I haven't really got the pattern right there but I can see that this one up here, as I slide it down, yeah, it's okay, but that kind of thing isn't really me. This one is a bit more me. I mean, it's it's not dissimilar in some ways, but instead of having the bands going across, I like them going up and down. And um, this one here is a bit more me, but I need to leave, you know, I need an aura line, a thin border between the sections because it doesn't work for me that way. But it's a start. And have I done any on the other page? Yeah, I've done a couple. Far easier when I decide to work on a page landscape because you can see it mostly, but you can see it all. This one I've added and did I do any others? It's hard to tell because everything is always a movable feast, even my drunken tree. I seem to have a lot of drunken drawings. I tend to draw things on a slant of wibbly wobbly. It's just me. So lots of things to consider here and lots of trees and i've even started on the next page i'll show you this one is landscape i'm going to try and draw landscape in here all the time so you know um, i can get it on lots of floral motifs but they're all based on the same kind of idea it starts off here with a circle with a spiral in and then it gradually changes shape and the different patterns and different things and leaving the petals off and weird scatterings of little seedy things because I like drawing those. Lots of ideas there so maybe flowers next maybe 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 some more flowers but today I think I'm going to add some just putting this up here where I can see it so you might see the bottom of it. Um, my gravity defined trees can remain as they are this one I'm going to leave this as it is for now but this one has got some space above it so I thought it might be quite nice to pop a tree or two in here today I might come back to those because I have a feeling I, I would like to add some colour um I'm not quite sure which ones do I did I want to put in see I have all of these grand plans and grand ideas and at the end of it I go oh I don't really know which one I want to do <laughs> I know which ones. So this is my favourite or successful way of doing this. 
is I draw the outline of the shape that I wish. These would actually make mountains if you cut the bottom off. <laughs> so, I keep telling you, there is no hope for me. And in this case, I am going to put a cent centre line in because I'm going to, I like this pattern where you have these lines going up to the middle line and curving over. I'm just going to show you the difference that a little change makes in this. And yeah, I haven't drawn the outside edge in and there is a reason for that which I will share with you in a moment. If you looked closely at my sketchbook you maybe have worked it out. I love pages in my sketchbook that have lots of things scattered on them rather than one coherent image. Um, I just find it an interesting thing to do. It's like a collection. It's all different ideas and motifs. It's just a very disorganised collection in my case. So in just quite a short space of time you can get lots and lots of ideas down. Not all of them will ever be used other than in a sketchbook page, but that's no bad thing either. Some of them are dead ends, dead ends, duds, dead ends. <laughs> yeah, mix your metaphors, Angela, or your words. You know, then they didn't work, they're going nowhere, but it's evidence that I've tried it, so I don't need to try that one again. Um, perhaps learn from the learn from this uh, this Angela, will you? Doing a lot of learning this week, not just with things like this, um, you know, the sketchbook and what have you. Just I just need to move my sketchbook back a bit more. It's getting in the way here. I'll move it over there. That's fine. Because there's always learning when you're drawing and trying things out. Let me zoom in a moment. Okay, so you can see what's happened here, and it's just these. I haven't inked this in because I thought when I ink it in and you've got a straight outline, it feels quite unnatural for something that is a natural thing. So what I decided to do was create just a slight curve between them, not as much as the other end, but just a little bit. And it just seems to give it more of a tree-like look. And, you know, I'm thinking now, and I could actually extend one of these lines and have them, or have it more of a zigzag, I suppose. But I, I know what I'm talking about, but I haven't tried doing it I can sort of see it in my mind but I need to do it on on paper and um, I will do that later on but this just gives it just that more a, a, just a nicer feel to the edge I don't know if you agree if you compare it with say this one where it's just a straight edge it's nice oh, oh gosh let's try and get it on so there's this one which is a straight edge and perhaps it would help if I zoom out. Oh, that's better. So you can compare the two. This straight edge, it's quite, it has quite an artificial almost feel about it. It's fine. And it, it depends on the style of art or the feel that you're going through. This is very almost vectory, I suppose. But this one's just by, you know, leaving out you know not drawing the outline first and coming back afterwards you get that different kind of feel to it let's just give it a proper stem there we are so this is now beginning to put these into perspective we've got enormous mounds okay the other thing i wanted to show you with this let me just pop that that way 
Yes, I'm going to draw a similar sized one. And again, I'm just going to pop that central line in. And as much as I'd love to have these overlapped like they would be trees in a forest. Okay. Is instead of drawing these lines straight, I'm going to curve them. And once you've got the first one in, it's a lot easier to do the, the following ones because they will just flow around it. And again, this is a simple change that can be made to any kind of pattern, I suppose. Well, perhaps not any kind, but to many of them. And it just gives a nice different, it gives more of a feeling of volume, I suppose. Again, it's, I'm leaving the outside edge till last. Again, this is, this is the lovely thing about using a pencil to draw these outlines is that you don't have to draw that defining shape first. The pencil does it for you. And then you can decide whether to go over the pencil or whether to do something a bit different there than you expected. So again, let me just fill the middle bit in. So the black there really does help a lot because it really does feel like there's something inside that these are curled up around and again this one i'm going to have them blending outwards you could have them going inwards as well perhaps i'll do a third version of these this kind of tree and just do that and see how it looks because that's easier than what I was thinking of a little while ago which has completely escaped my mind yep it has I said something and I can't remember what it was it's about 12 minutes in so I'll try and remember 12 minutes okay so third one of these which actually works out quite nicely because it's um, this almost feels like a rock platform so I've got all the same kind of trees growing there okay so again I'm going to just gently bend those in and just carry on going up It's like everything as well with this is that depending on the scale at which you draw them means that you could actually put more patterns within but I'm drawing these on quite a small scale I am using an O3 um, Unipin pen here the O5 is a bit thick for this scale of drawing and O2s and O1s are just a little bit on the thin side for me and what I like in my, my art and my drawing. So instead of curving outwards let's have a look at what the difference of curving in makes. It may be an unpleasant change or it may not be until you try it you don't actually know. Oh I know what I was going to do it was actually this kind of thing. There we are. Trying to work out how to get it so we've got these going out. What I would say I would do though to emphasize this, emphasize this, would be to let me have a look. Yeah. Would be to draw these going in at quite a sharp angle. I don't know if there's any visible difference. I 
There is, yeah. So it gives it more of a spiky feel. Here, can you see how I've the top where this inner curve here curves in that top part of it joins further up the stem than on this side so you get a more spiky version. Of course you could just do it without it curving that way and just slope. There we are. So I'd better do one of them and I just for comparison. Because I can see what I mean, but sometimes it's easier for people to to see. Right, if I zoom in for this one. Okay. Perhaps that helps you to see this one as well, is that there we are, it's just readjusting itself. Oops. Okay. Perhaps you can see the difference. These are this is quite a nice shaped curve here. Whereas this one goes up and this top arm of that, that C curve is much shorter and further in. Look, I didn't even be fuss and fiddle here. Last one of these. And where shall I draw it? I'll draw it up here because I can. Again, with all of these, it doesn't matter what shape you make your tree. You can have square ones, fluffy ones. As long as the pattern works, that's all that matters, really. And then... I've discovered I like to put the first curved one in on one side or the other and then mirror it onto the other side. So I get something that's a similar curve on both sides. Symmetry is something I do like. My love of mandalas, for example, and other such things. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. No, that's ended up going quite straight, isn't it? It's fine. It's what it is and... And all's well. Oh, look at that, I didn't even finish that one off, did I? And in keeping, I'll keep these ones to the corner there just fluffed out. That's not the right word. That's not the word I'm groping for. Curved there. And let's have a look and see how we can get something that's a bit more spiky on the edge. I'm not sure I like spikies, but you know, this, I think I'm going to do a shape like this. So it's a curve, starts from the lower line and goes up. So we uh, that is something that is distinctly spiky. Of course, we could do it the other way as well if we wished. I'll just throw that one in there. So I've got a strange tree, nothing new there. So different ways of doing it. So just by changing that curve. So that's a very bizarre looking tree, but it's okay because this is a sketchbook. So just by making simple changes, it changes the whole feel of these particular trees. Okie dokes. So, this is what I was thinking about doing, so I can forget what I said. I've done it. It's getting that kind of shape. I think it would work better with wider sections, but, you know, it is what it is. Another tree that I particularly enjoyed, which I'll share, is this one. Now I'm going to have it like this, but I'm also going to draw in 
some guidelines. I'm going to draw one in there and perhaps lengthen this so it sits behind here because it starts with two rice shapes at the top. Then the next row, we're going to pop one in between those because that's a natural space. And then put a couple in there. And I can put a partial one in on either side just. This is using judgment and personal preference, of course, it can all, you can always go back and add things. So again, here, we'll see the whole one here, 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 and here. And then I can pop some in between these just to fill out those spaces. And this one, this isn't quite the same as I've got in my sketchbook. I think I drew it in a different way in my sketchbook. But it's the same kind, it's the same kind of idea. I think in my sketchbook I made these really wide so they joined up so there wasn't the ones in between. Well, I'll give that a go in a moment. like that and then the last one well we're going to have quite a lot here close together so they are getting smaller and smaller so I am going to fit them together like this that's actually how I did it and one last one on the side finish the side off. So that creates a rather interesting pattern and texture. There's lots of little gaps to fill in this one or places that can be neatened and tidied up that benefit from a little bit of black like underneath these and perhaps at the top here just to add some darkness. It helps to not just give a bit of shadow and a bit of structure, but it helps to separate out the layers, I think. I say I think. I'm just trying to work out how to do it. That's nicer. To have the tops of these neatened off and that works nicely. So that's nice as it is, but what is nicer, and I'm going to go to an 01 pen here, is, I think, is to add just a, this helps to increase that darkness close to where the layers of these overlap. And a bit of fanciness, nothing much. It's already quite a busy shape with all of the different sections in uh, especially so because I've drawn it on quite a small scale and I do need to pop them in these areas which means that the black will extend quite a way which is fine I'm doing this quite quickly rather than really neatly and tidily is fine. Sketchbook remember. And then did I on that looking for the one I've got. Here 
I just want to I don't want to finish off right at the bottom I want to have these sticking down but that black just helps to even off the curve there now I could just carry on doing this to fill all of these spaces but I'm going to leave it as it is so the way I, I've done it in my sketchbook, just for comparison. Is. So I've drawn a simple pencil shape there. Okay. And again, I start off at the top with two of these shapes I put a second one in here and there and there and I don't put any in the center in between them except that those will form the next row down So I am drawing these shapes so that they, the sides touch and those sides are what creates the spaces for the ones the, to fit in for the row below. Remembering that we're trying to fit these in and I'm not doing it very well. A funny day today. Lots of broken time. So between um, meetings and I'm catching up with Brett on Zoom later. Um, and then another meeting. I need to try and fit some work in. And I thought the easiest way for me to make sure that I get a video out today is to actually create one before I start my work I'm going to go and have a bath while the video is uploading so that at least I'm clean and tidy for the day and then I'll see what kind of time I've got left so this is the same kind of thing as this it's not flaring out as much perhaps that's why I put the bits in between or how I needed to because these were getting wider and wider but this one's quite a narrow one it's still a nice shape and, you know it's possible that if I want it to flare out a little bit, then I can just put part ones of these on the side. I don't know if you see what I did. So a part partial one here and another partial one there. It just helps to spread this out a little bit. And I think I'd need one here because I've made a right pig's ear. And with these, I've, so I've just discovered it's easier to add them from the bottom up there. I am going to just round these points off here. Because I just think it, it... My little mind, it needs it. It makes it look neater. Or the, the, the darkness that's there just helps with setting the layers off. And instead of these loops, I'm going to pop a line with a ball on the end. Even on the skinny ones at the edge, the really thin ones. Well, you get to a point where you can't manage that. But that's a bit of a mess at the top, but that's fine. So there we are in how long? Of 29 minutes, a lot of chat and a few trees drawn. Some bizarre, some not so. Let me just move this out the way, Mo. Yeah, pop those, pop those back in my working pencil case. I've got so many pencil cases, it is ridiculous. Okay, time for the um, usual let's have a look at how we can shape this 
for this one I'm going to put some shadow around the outside I think I think that would work nicely and quite a bit at the bottom so there we go this one will do some shading just to help to bring the to bring this out and keep these tips mostly in with highlight on. I'll do the same with these, but this you can I feel I can be a bit more fancy with and bring out the fact that these feel like they they overlap by putting just a tiny line of graphite in sort of the edge and where sort of like these rolls would be in shadow because they do look like they're rolling so the bottom of each one of these sections and let's be careful here with blending them because I don't want the whole sections to become grey I just want to smooth out the shadow and keep it to a particular area if it spills a little bit over to the one below I don't mind so much but I don't want it to fill that particular one So we asked that one. These ones, I'm going to leave these because I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with them. Um, they're very strange, very peculiar. But sometimes you just have to try things out. Part of me wants to fill these with circles at the end. Possible. Mm, maybe not now. These, there's definitely going to be shadow underneath each of the layers because that's what's needed. Because these are so pattern intensive, it's going to be, I want to keep this particularly um, fairly simple. Otherwise I'll end up with these spaces filled with graphite, which is not what I want. I think I've smudged some ink on this one, it's fine. Okay, let's do this. Just a bit. There. So we'll all be fine. There we go. So that's just some very simple kinds of shading. Now I do have my um, graphite ink pencils at hand. So this is ocean blue because there is a green in here, but I like ocean blue. And why not? I haven't got any pink in there though, because they don't do pink. Oh gosh. Okay, so again, this is one of these cases where I'm just going to start by dragging a tiny bit of colour down. Not fussing and fiddling with it. 
and then going back and activating the top part but pulling the colour towards that shadow area so that we get some what I am going to do is I will just that's a bit better so already that's looking a lot more Ooh, wrong one. Pop that away so I don't use it again. Well, oh, that feels odd for, for graphite tints. And then realised, ah, oh, it's not graphite tints. So let's do this on all of them. Including the ones at the top. And the same kind of idea is just bring a little bit down and then push the rest of the colour up a little bit down push the rest of the colour up a little bit down push the rest of the colour up so I'm tinting the whole of the tree like so so it stands out from the background as well, the colour, and that's what helps to make a difference I think, because I colour all my backgrounds, well I am at present, not in my big sketchbook though, that's because there's a whole mishmash of stuff in there, but I could colour some of the pages, I'll colour the pages as I go along, just didn't think of doing it. The phrase is Netflix and chill. Well, for me, it's Netflix and drawer of an evening, generally. Just clean that off. So that looks quite nice. That automatically brings it um, not just to life, but um, into helps to separate, as I said, to separate it from the background. Okay, so this one is slate green, which is more of a greeny colour. It's not green green, but it's, you know, it'll do. This one doesn't seem to want to activate quite as much, and I don't know why, or perhaps it's just because it's the colour it is. But it's, um, it's not a bright in your face green. There's enough of a colour here just to tint it. You might notice I'm going over these little circles. That's okay because I have plans for them. Okay, let me have a look. Steel blue, green grey. Oh no, that, that was slate green. Let me go with meadow, please. Because meadow is quite a bright coloured green. Quite yellowy green, really. I've got my bigger set of graphite tint pencils out. I've got a colour in there called ivy. Um, I'm not sure. There's sage as well, and I've got that in here, but I don't use it very often. This is just this is just sort of like a, a variation on the, the green in the background, really. I'm just taking just the tiniest bit of colour, just to colour out to the edge. And I can do that all the way around because whatever I pick up from one, if there's a little bit left over it, it'll go to the next and so on. Trying not to catch more than just a little bit of colour. And then it's time to come and just push this Activate the other area where there's a lot of the graphite tint there. The um, might not think that the 
the graphite shadow would make much of a difference, but it really does. It really intensifies those shadows at the base. But it also gives, um, have a look because I do with some more colour going up towards the middle of this one now. That's a bit better. A little bit more comparable. And if I've put too much colour somewhere, I'll just lift it up a bit. It'll be fine. It does because it, 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 you can see here how intense the shadows are where I've put them. And they wouldn't be that intense if I hadn't used that colour. And I think for my last one I'm going to add colour to, I am just going to pop the colour right the way along the edge and let the shadows do the work for me that I've put in as I spread the colour out. I'm using aubergine. I haven't got a pink graphite tint. There isn't a pink one. I doubt they'll ever do a pink one. But I do have purple, so I'm a happy bunny. And yeah, I know there aren't really purple trees, but I am not worried one little bit because it's my little world here. I can do them any colour I like. Just get a bit more water flowing because I am just going to. up some colour from the edge and move it right out and then just activate it all and use that as a kind of wash I suppose. You can see how much difference it makes so let's just pick some up. A bit that run off there but that's fine. And there we are. A trio of um, leaves okay. Leaves, they're not leaves at all. Stems, I've got a cool brown which will do, I'm sure. So darkest underneath where the um, foliage would be and just drag it down. So there we've got those. I'm going to pop those to one side and let them dry. Because before I finish, I do want to try adding colour to these. So this ends apple, I'm going to add autumn brown. Again, graphite tint. The, the distress ink that I use to colour the paper. On this one, there's a lot of it. So I'm aware that it may interact not very well with some colours. But... I say may because although it looks like there's a lot here, there may not be as much as I think there is. Let's go with that and let's see how these work. I may not add water to them all, but I just want you to see with this one as well how just that hint of colour helps to lift the whole thing from the background in the same way that adding shadow and colour to the background helps to separate things as well and make things more interesting, put things to the background and things to the foreground, like the background goes to the back and the foreground stays in the foreground. And here I am activating all of the graphite tint to begin with because I, it's a different kind of feeling I want here. Is I really want to keep as much of this darkness at the bottom. But I do need a little bit more around the edges, I think. I 
the key is to blot off when you've got what you think is too much colour on the brush and just let the rest of it do its work. In the little areas I can't fuss too much. So that's added some colour there. Um, let's have a look at these because I am intrigued to see with one of these. So I'm going to use the meadow again, knowing that I can always add colour to it if I need to. And if it doesn't, it, it should be alright here because there's not so much of the background colour in this particular particular um, design. So I'm putting the colour where the shadows are and then just moving it out. Just to see. I'll need to make some more coloured paper before much longer. I'm getting through it quite quickly at the moment. So if you'd like to see how I colour paper with Distress Inks again, I've done it in a previous video, but if you'd like a video de dedicated to it, then just let me know and I'll, I'll make that so. I use Distress Inks, but you could use any kind of um, ink pads that you can blend with. I have got Distress Oxides here, but they tend to colour the paper a lot more. And they put pigment down because distress inks are dyes. So there's no solid in them. It's just all liquid. Um, but distress oxides are pigments and they have this um, opaque pigment in them and it can clog pens up like nobody's business. And of course, you don't want to put it over the top of anything that you've drawn because it will, you know, it will not obliterate it, but it certainly won't help. So that works quite nicely in there, actually. Um, have a look. Got that grey green here. So I didn't put any shadow in that one, but let's have a look because I can must probably do it with this. Nice thing about water watercolor media like this, pencils and so on. If you know you're going to blend them out, you don't need to be quite so fussy. With Putting them on, the idea is to get enough of the pigment down that you've, cooked, you've got enough there to use. And the water will help smooth out the lines. Perhaps not perfectly, but then it's quite nice to have some texture. Well, I think so. This is grey with just a slightly hint, slight hint of green. Which is quite interesting. But it means that I can always add other colour over the top of it. It's a good way of adding just shadow. So there we go. So that kind of works. It would actually need some along the edge, I think, in both of these cases to make this look. So I'm just picking some, some of the colour up with my brush just to pop along the edge a bit. And darken that edge up, which may work to a greater or lesser degree. Picking it up. 
doesn't feel that I am, but I am. There we go, and let's just blend that just that little bit. So there we are, we have, and I'll zoom out. I've got a few trees done today, haven't I? I've added these ones. I think these I really particularly like. These are nice. These were experiments that went wrong, but I think drawing shapes in here of some kind will help to fix it sort of. This one will always look bizarre, but it's a sketchbook page, so it's fine. Um, colour really does bring things to life and you can see the difference here but you can also very much see the difference on this one how how it brings those to the forefront and, and really helps pattern would do the same but I think I'd run the risk of becoming overly ornate with these and with these big sections here these these inner parts would be fabulously patterned even if it's just with with lines contour lines lines that follow the shape to enhance the shape um, that would work nicely but um, I think if you try to put too much in unless you draw this on a really big scale it, it would just become overly busy or overly lost or lost in the um, in the background as it were have a look very quickly show you what I mean so I'd start from the points and move them down just really simple Nothing more needed, really. And of course, using colour would be a nice touch as well. So the brown would look really nice here, I think. Or any other colour. You know, a, a forest green fine liner if you have one to work really nicely as well or green of any kind so there you can see the difference that makes it just helps to bring a bit more structure to it and do the same here almost the one thing I, I haven't done on these is these bands because I'm not entirely sure what I'd want to do with them part of me wants to make them metallic and I know that can be a big mistake because the same colour around just flattens it. So it's working out how to change that, what to do, how to do it. I'm not quite sure. Um, this, I was really thinking about the highlights here and I was really thinking about little putting little dots of gold here so they would catch the light. Um, but I haven't worked that one out yet. But there we are. More trees. Will I do more tomorrow? Don't know. Let me know if you'd like some more trees. Let me know and I will certainly do my best to do something. I mean, I have got space on these and of course I've got the gravity defying page, wherever it is, there. And look at the difference, you know, that these are lovely, but they really do need something. It's, I think for me, see I've gone off on one, I was going to finish. The lines I've drawn here are just too fine. I prefer a bolder line like this. This O3 is perfect. Must order some O3s for my stash. Um, it's perfect. O5s are great if I'm drawing on a bigger scale, but O3 is perfect mostly for work like this. O2s, O1s are just too thin. And they, they, it feels like things get lost in the background. I like the thicker lines. I like the the feel of almost stained glass, the distinct graphic nature of them. That's me. Um, but, you know, so lots of done. Look at the difference. Which do you prefer? I don't know. I'll pop them, pop them. I can't pop them side by side because you can't see them. You don't need to leave me a comment, but, you know, it's about thinking about what do you like? I, look at that. That's com in comparison. It's crazy mad. But who knows whether you know, pages like this will end up like this because I've got all this space. I won't waste paper, even if it means gravity defying stuff. So there we are. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope, I've, I hope you've enjoyed, um, that I've inspired you in some kind of way. 
and that you take time to be creative and give you some ideas for things you could do. Uh, you know, hills with trees on. I know, I'm losing the plot. I need to sort this out and sort myself out for the day as well. So until I see you again, hopefully you'll be back. Please take care, look after yourselves and take time to be creative. Bye for now. Hoyle.